Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another beautiful day here at the gathering service. I am, I am extremely thankful this morning because uh, I thought I was going to have a lot of problems because, if you don't know, up here I use my uh, iPad for the words and the music that I uh, use, but it's really hard to change pages while you're playing, and my pedal wasn't working all this week, but it just decided to start working right now. So, beautiful, praise the Lord, I can actually have a good service where I'm not so stressed out. But um, I would just, it kind of reminds me of all the little things we miss during the week, doesn't it? There's a lot of things that would stress us out normally that God protects us from. A lot of little things that go right when all the rest of the day is going wrong. So it, it's some of those things that I, you got to thank God for and recognize his presence in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Will you please stand as we worship God this morning? your heart what stirs your soul what matters come to mind the cares you keep the thoughts you think it's not all wasted time And you will find joy still comes in the morning, hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming, there's still good news worth repeating. So lift your hands. wonder why we lost our way from home a father finds a child inside we'll let them go and home Still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your hands. Let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything praise the Lord. Let everything, let everything, let everything praise the Lord. still comes in the morning hope still walks with the hurting if you're still alive and breathing praise the lord don't stop dancing and dreaming there's still good news worth repeating so lift your head
letting go of every single dream I laid one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Doesn't change what you see I try to win this war, I confess My hands are weary, I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you Truth is you know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead that you've not seen So when all things be my life and breath I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through when you don't give the answer as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you You are my strength and comfort You are my steady hand You are the firm foundation The rock in which I stand Your ways are always higher Your plans are always good There's not song we could ever sing Worthy you of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy you of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who can ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one you could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Yeah.
salvation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my You may be seated. Uh, there are some guys that are battling prostate cancer that we want to uh, especially pray for too. Um, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, we love you. We give you praise and glory and honor and adoration. Uh, Lord, you are worthy. And uh, uh, Lord, we uh, pray, uh, God, that during this time of worship, uh, during this time of um, hearing your word, during this time of uh, singing your praises, that uh, we would just be able to draw uh, close to you, that you would come uh, near and that you would meet with us. Lord, you are uh, worthy. Uh, God, be with Leona. Uh, Lord, touch her body. Uh, Lord, be with all the moms. Uh, God, I pray that you would bless them indeed. And uh, Lord, thank you for the blessing that they are in, in our lives. Uh, God, uh, uh, just pray that as we read the word, as we uh, study, uh, God, this story, this uh, parable today, uh, that you would speak to us in a powerful way. And Lord, for these things, we'll give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, 
The picture is of what, do you think? There's a parable that this ties into. Prodigal son, prodigal son. I, actually, I was looking for uh, pictures, and um, this was uh, one of my favorite ones. And I, I showed Debbie uh, like two or three different pictures, and she thought that this was the best one. So uh, we're going to be talking today about daring to dream of the prodigal's return. But I thought, since it was Mother's Day, uh, I ask you a couple questions uh, about moms. What's the best thing about moms? What's, or one of the best things about moms? They make dumb jokes. They make dumb jokes. <laughs> my, mom, uh, my mom makes great chocolate chip cookies that are even better when they're frozen. And uh, when I go down, she often gives me a, a tub of cookies that my uh, kids then, uh, when I bring them back home, my kids uh, wind up with them. Uh, eating them. Uh, anybody else? A great thing about a mom. Tim, you surely have one or two. A home cooked meal? Yeah. Debbie's home right now. I, she came to first service with, uh, St with Stella, uh, but she's home right now fixing lasagna. And uh, it'll be good when we get home. Uh, okay, you moms out there, what's the best thing about being a mom or a grandma? We can make lasagna for them. <laughs> 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 oh. Uh, actually, Zach, when he found out that uh, Debbie was cooking, he said, why is mom cooking? It's Mother's Day. And I said, uh, I texted him back, Debbie, your mom won't let me cook out tomorrow. I was going to grill out steaks, and, uh, and Debbie didn't want me to do that in the rain. Um, let's, uh, l let's talk about the story. Uh, this parable actually is in uh, chapter 15 of Luke. Uh, so it's Luke chapter 15. And in this same chapter, Jesus talks about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and then the lost son. Uh, what happens uh, that sparks these three stories is that Jesus is hanging out with the hard-living crowd. He's hanging out with the uh, tax collectors and... Um, uh, other sorts of sinners, uh, and, uh, and he's getting criticized by uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees saying, uh, why do you hang out with these folks? And, uh, and so uh, Jesus tells these three stories. And uh, uh, actually Luke 15 has been called the lost chapter. Uh, Charles Dickens, uh, in terms of the story of the prodigal son, uh, said that this was the finest short story ever written or ever told. Uh, and some have said uh, that this story would better be called uh, the story of the loving father, uh, the story of the waiting father, the story of the forgiving father, uh, the story of the prodigal father because he was just extravagant and, uh, in his love. Uh, a prodigal actually means excessively extravagant, really. Uh, the story of the elder brother. Uh, uh, the story of the prodigal has actually been a story that resonates with us so much uh, because I, I think we all know a prodigal. Or maybe we've all been, uh, at least some of us have been a prodigal at one time or another. Uh, it's a story that's been played out in family after family, uh, century after century, and culture after culture. So um, here is uh, the story of the prodigal son, and we're going to end uh, with uh, the father welcoming uh, the, the younger son home. Uh, verse 11 of chapter 15 of Luke. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, give me, notice he doesn't say please, uh, and evidently doesn't say thank you either. Uh, father, give me uh, my share of the estate. Uh, 
So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had and set off uh, for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. Uh, that word squander actually means uh, to throw and scatter. Uh, it's like throwing money into the air. Uh, um, and so he squandered everything in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. Uh, so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Now, remember, this is a Jewish boy. Pigs are unclean animals, and he is he's feeding pigs. And not only that, but Jesus goes on and says, um, he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And in other words, he, he was wanting to eat, you know, he was so hungry, so desperate, uh, that he wanted to eat pig slop. And, and so, uh, somebody has said that it basically uh, this, uh, this younger son was on the Jewish equivalent of Skid Row. Uh, that um, things were, uh, had just gone from bad uh, to worse for this, uh, for this young man. Uh, verse 17, when he came to his senses, in other words, he has a change of mind, he has a revelation. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion, for him, and he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Uh, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Um, the, the calf would have been used, uh, a fattened calf would have been used for a great celebration, it, it, probably a celebration that the whole village uh, would be invited to. Uh, so it, it really is an act of extravagance. Uh, let us have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Let's uh, pray together. Lord Jesus, I pray that in these next uh, few minutes that you would just speak to us uh, from this story. God, I, I pray that you would uh, help us uh, to know, uh, Lord, that you have a heart for those that are far from you, those that are in a distant country, uh, those that have wandered uh, away from you. Uh, and God, uh, uh, thank you uh, for the example of this father in this story. Uh, God, speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So you have this younger son who demands his inheritance before his dad dies. It, it's basically the equivalent of uh, him saying to dad, drop dead, dad. Uh, I want what's coming to me, and I want it now. And, and so we don't know how the inheritance was divided out, whether uh, the son got uh, some fields and some animals, but we do know that uh, whatever he got, uh, if it was actual uh, animals and land, he cashed it out, uh, took the money, and went as far from the father as he could. Uh, he went as far as he could uh, from his hometown, from his brother, from his father. He didn't want anything to do with them. And, uh, you know, we've already said that basically he wasted his money. He was burning through money or, or uh, throwing money to the wind. 
And uh, eventually, uh, you know, when you do that, you wind up without money. And that's what happened uh, to this younger son. Uh, and he began to get hungry. Uh, nobody would give him anything. And, and so he hired himself uh, to a local pig farmer and uh, began to uh, slot pigs. And uh, was so hungry that he thought about eating the pig's food. But then, then he came to his senses. He, uh, he said, you know, my dad's got uh, plenty of uh, the hired folks it, on, on my dad's farm. I, they have plenty to eat. I'll just, I'll, I'll just go back to dad and say, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Uh, uh, take me back a, as a hired servant. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And, uh, and so he gets up and he goes to his father. And I love the fact that as he's headed Back to his father. The father evidently is looking down the road, wondering if today's the day that my son's going to be coming back. Is today the day? And so, and, and so the, the son's making his way back, and the father sees him in the distance. He sees him down the road, and uh, he does something that... Um, adult uh, Jewish men uh, didn't do in that day and in that culture. Uh, he actually uh, probably hikes up his robe and runs uh, to meet the son. And, and when he uh, comes to his son, he embraces him. He falls on his uh, neck, basically. I, I, I think uh, he was probably crying, uh, and the son was probably crying, and, and and actually, it says that he uh, kissed him. Now, uh, it was customary uh, for um, people to greet each other with a kiss. That's the reason that uh, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Uh, you know, when you would meet somebody, uh, you, you would uh, give them a kiss. Actually, Paul, in one of his letters, uh, says, I think it's uh, to the Corinthians, the letter to the Corinthians, right at the end, greet the brethren with a holy kiss. Uh, you, you know, it was like us shaking hands. Uh, but uh, so he kisses him, but the word isn't for this polite kiss of greeting. Uh, the word is basically a kiss of emotion, or it, it means that he smothered him with kisses. He showered him with kisses. And the, the son, I think, kind of pulls away from his dad, and, and he re begins to say this rehearsed speech. Uh, Father, I've sinned against you and, uh, 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 and heaven, and uh, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the dad interrupts him right there, cuts the speech short. And he tells his servants, uh, go get uh, the, uh, the best robe. Uh, go get uh, the ring. Uh, go uh, get shoes uh, for his feet. Uh, one of the signs of being a slave in that day and age was that they were shoeless, uh, mostly. O only uh, the wealthy, o only those that were free uh, would wear uh, sandals. And, and, so, and so he got uh, sandals for his feet. He got this robe. He got this ring that was probably a singet, signet ring uh, that you could use to put uh, the family crest uh, on documents and letters. It, it was a symbol of authority. Uh, so he's being welcomed back as, as a son, not as a slave. And, and, and the father says, let's kill the fatted calf. This son that was lost is now found. This son that was dead is now alive. And it, it's a great story. It probably... You know, when he left, the whole village probably talked about it. And now that he's back, the whole village talks about it again. And um, it's a great parable, a great story that should give us hope. Prodigals do come back. Now, at some of you have heard enough of my story to know that uh, when I was a, a teenager, uh, in sixth grade, 
I think the hormones kicked in and all other sorts of stuff happened. And I, I wound up walking away from the Lord. Mom, uh, and uh, Mom had raised me in the church. Uh, we had gone on uh, Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday evening, and Wednesday night. Uh, we were there whenever the doors were opened. And, uh, and mom had raised me in the church, but I kind of walked away from it. Mom and I had huge conflicts about uh, whether I was going to go to church or not. And, uh, and so I thought it would be kind of cool uh, for you to hear things from mom's perspective. So mom's going to come up. Everybody say, hi, Judy. Hi, Judy. And she's got the yellow mic. <laughs> And they drove all the way from Muncie to be here today. In the rain. In the rain. And mom said if they had known what the weather was going to be like, they may not have come. Or probably wouldn't have come, maybe. Is this on? Yeah, I think it's on. Uh, go ahead and talk, hold it up and talk into it. Testing one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> mom used to be actually in a gospel group called the Disciple Heirs. Yeah. And she said when I asked her to share, uh, she said, well, I'm more used to singing, uh, but, uh, but she was willing to come. Uh, Mom, um, and so I'm just going to ask her some uh, uh, questions. She was pretty short in first service. We'll see if she's a <laughs> short It's probably not going to be any different. <laughs> uh, describe uh, my walking away from the Lord from your perspective. Well, you were very rebellious. And that was difficult to have a rebellious child. Okay. Did you wonder what had sparked it? The reason for the change? Well, the devil always sparks it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, did you feel guilty about or ashamed about having uh, a kid that was far from the Lord? I don't think I felt guilty or ashamed. I was sorry, but I felt like I had done my best. Okay, all right. And it, we were kind of a divided family when it came to faith stuff. Yes. My, uh, my dad wasn't walking with the Lord, uh, and uh, a actually during the time that... I was away from the Lord. You guys wound up getting a divorce and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. But you didn't beat yourself up over my rebellion and that sort of thing. No, I don't. I don't remember that I did. Okay. Um, what role did faith play in helping you deal with having a kid that was... Uh, away from God. Well, I think whatever trials you face, you, you have your faith to get you through it. Okay. Did you pray a lot? Did you have others oh, help yes. you pray? Yes, I prayed for you, and, we, and other people prayed for you. What did you have them pray? Or? Pray that you'd come back to the Lord. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Were there scriptures that you especially... I think, I think uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. And that's from Proverbs? Proverbs 22.6. 22.6. So you still remember the address? Well, I looked it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I knew it was in Proverbs, but I wasn't sure where, so I looked it up. One of the things that I remember um, uh, about mom and, and her willingness uh, to just remain faithful is that uh, uh, she worked, you worked as a nurse, right? Right. And so she would leave early in the morning and she had a Bible that she always had devotion, <laughs> <laughs> devotions out of. Uh, it was a, one of those living Bibles, uh, one of those that had a green back w with foam and you wore that Bible out, didn't you? I remember when you were little, I, I read you a Bible story book. Do you remember that? Yeah. In fact, I've got a, a copy in my library mm -hmm. that was just the same. 
Um, did you ever lose hope of my returning to the Lord? No, I don't think so. I kept praying. I, I don't think I ever completely lost hope. Okay. Probably got discouraged a few times. Did you get especially discouraged when, when I moved in with Dad or Dad and Sherry? Well, I'm sure that was a hard time. Uh -huh. But you were so rebellious, in a way, it was kind of a relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what advice would you give to those that are dealing with prodigals today? Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep on... Keep on praying. Keep on praying. Uh, keep on being hopeful. Right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Mom, uh, for sharing. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> Grandma Judy did good. So, I just uh, thought... This ought to be a pretty practical message. And so I just want to make a, a couple of, uh, oh, I wanted to show you a picture of me when I was this age. Um, I had hair back then. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> um, and so we've had the interview. Um, here are some things to remember if you have a prodigal. One is this. Do not put yourself on a guilt guilt trip or be ashamed. I, I think sometimes uh, parents of prodigals or if you actually you can have a spouse that's a prodigal. Uh, you, you can have a variety of people that are uh, prodigals in your life. Uh, but it, it's easy to beat yourself up with I wish I had. Uh, I wish I could have. Uh, I, I should have done this. Uh, but um, you know Folks are going to do what they're going to do uh, often. And, and so uh, you can do your best and, and still uh, wind up with uh, somebody that's wandering from the Lord. Uh, the second thing is to guard your heart against bitterness. We don't know in terms of background uh, what all was said before the younger brother left. Uh, you, you know... Could have been that they had some knock, knock down drag outs uh, between father and son. It could have been that um, the father was just blindsided by this. Uh, but we do know that uh, for this to have happened uh, would have been hurtful. Uh, the whole community would be talking about it. Uh, it would have been uh, something that um, uh, would have been difficult for the father to deal with. And, and he could have um, said to himself, with all that I've done for this son, and this is how he treats me. Uh, you, you know, but instead, uh, the father keeps an open heart uh, to his son. I, I think he guarded himself uh, against bitterness. Um, if you have a prodigal, remember, you have a partner with God. God loves your prodigal even more than you do. Uh, God uh, desires for your prodigal uh, to come home even more than you do. And, uh, and so we can partner with God, and we can also uh, partner with others. I, I, I think a great thing uh, to pray uh, and to ask God for is uh, some folks that take a special interest in, in uh, uh, my son or my daughter, or whoever it is that, that is your prodigal. Uh, Lord, help uh, somebody to take a special interest in them and, and invest in them and, and, and believe in them and, and, uh, and partner with me in and, uh, praying that they will come back. Uh, and then... If you have a prodigal, remember to be hopeful and expectant. I, I think that that's what we see in the father as, he, as he's continuing to look down the road. We don't know how many days he continued to look down the road. He, 
I, I think he was expecting God to do something, to bring his son home. He was hopeful and expectant. And then um, if you have a prodigal, remember uh, to welcome as is. Um, this uh, dad didn't make uh, the prodigal go take a shower uh, before he grabbed him in his arms. He, he uh, grabbed him in his arms, uh, um, pig smell and all, and he held on to him. And, uh, and he knew that there was going to be a process of adjustment, uh, a, a process where, um, it, you know, he was going um, he, he to have to uh, see uh, this younger son uh, change some of his thinking, change uh, maybe the way that he talked. Uh, it, you know, it was going to take a while uh, for him to clean up, but, but it was going to be a process. A actually, um, I can remember that when I came back to the Lord, a actually what happened was uh, we were having a revival uh, in our home church, and, and on a Sunday morning, I was visiting uh, my mom, and uh, on a Sunday morning, uh, I it was just done in. I, I, I was ready. I knew something had to be changed uh, in, in my life. I, I knew that my heart had to be changed if I was going to go on. Uh, I was probably really um, almost clinically depressed, I think. And, and what happened was um, I went down uh, to the altar and uh, mom uh, was on one side of me. Reverend Hill was in front of me. And then uh, our, the lady who would become my youth leader was right beside me too. And uh, I uh, prayed to rededicate my life to the Lord. Uh, but even after that, uh, you, you know, my language had been filthy before, and it, it took a while to uh, retrain my tongue. Uh, it, so, some things uh, just took a while to, uh, for it to be adjusted. And, and I think uh, that this younger son experienced that too. So uh, we need to welcome folks as they are. If we'll love folks um, with God's love as they are, God will begin to change them. Uh, actually, um, I have a friend uh, named Leon Pomeroy. He's a pastor. And uh, years ago at an elementary camp, I heard him say uh, something like this. He, he said, uh, God ha catches his fish before he cleans them. And, and so, uh, you, you know, if you have a prodigal uh, and, and they have come back and, and you expect all their behavior to change instantaneously, you're, you're probably going to be uh, a little disappointed in that. But we are folks in process, and, and God is in process of making us all more and more like Jesus. Uh, so uh, the whole idea uh, of welcoming them. Uh, something I, I heard that kind of explains this, uh, that there's a principle that if... Um, I allow you, uh, a lot of times we say uh, to folks, you become like, like us and then uh, we'll receive you. Uh, you. You know, we'll let you belong. Uh, but actually, it, it kind of works in reverse. Uh, it, you, you know, that when we accept someone, when we, uh, you, you know, let them belong, they become like us. And, and so... Um, Welcome them as is. And then, if you have a prodigal, uh, like mom said, remember to be praying. Now, here are some prayer tips uh, about praying for a prodigal. Uh, one is this, uh, and, you, you know, it, this takes a little bit of thought, uh, you, you know, a little bit of meditating on, but talk to the Lord more about your prodigal than you do to your prodigal about the Lord. One of the things that I found in my own family, in my own relationships, uh, uh, those that I'm closest to, I can probably say uh, the least to uh, about Jesus, unless they bring up the subject. Now, I can talk about Jesus to a stranger, and, and, but it's something about um, 
Well, nobody likes to be preached to, right? Uh, nobody likes uh, uh, faith shoved down their throat. And, and when a prodigal uh, already knows that they're far from God and, and you try to uh, talk to them a lot about it, it probably pushes them even farther away. So talk to God about them and let God uh, deal with them. Uh, the second tip is this. Uh, pray that God will protect them from things they don't want to be protected from. I, I prayed this uh, for my kids uh, as they were growing up. I, I actually really believe that God's prevenient grace can uh, keep us from, can keep prodigals from making mistakes that, that would be huge uh, in their lives. And, and so one of the ways that I try to partner with God is uh, uh, this. Uh, Lord, protect uh, them from things they don't even want to be protected from. I actually still pray this for, I still pray this for you, Megan. Uh, I pray this for, uh, for all my kids. I, I pray this for, uh, for my granddaughters already, my grand gals. Um, actually, in Psalm 91, verse 11, it says this, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. I, I think we can ask the Lord to put his angels round about uh, those, that, um, uh, those that we're praying for. Uh, Lord, protect them. Protect them, God. A actually, um, you, you know, when I was uh, raised, uh, like, like today probably, uh, drugs were plentiful in our hometown. And, and I know that God protected me from uh, some of the harder drugs because I had uh, even made arrangements to go out and party with some folks. But when they came to the house to get me, um, I, there was just a restraining influence, and I, I didn't go that night. It was on a Friday night. I, I remember that well. Um, but I think that that was because God was honoring the prayers of, of those who were praying for me. Um, another tip about praying for a prodigal is this. Uh, pray that God would surround them with believers who will be salt and light uh, f for Jesus for them. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, salt makes uh, people uh, thirsty, right? Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, pray that God will put uh, vibrant, um, spirit-filled uh, Christians around them uh, that will be able to be Jesus with skin on and uh, will just make them want what, uh, what they have. We'll see the joy in them. We'll see the peace in them. And, and uh, that that will be attractive uh, to the prodigal. Um, pray that God will take off their spiritual blinders. Actually, uh, uh, Paul says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Satan, who is the God of this age, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious uh, light of the good news. Oh, one of the things that we can pray is, Lord, take the blinders off of my child. Take the blinders uh, off of this person that I love who's far from you and, and help them to see spiritual reality as it really is. I think that that is a powerful prayer to pray. Um, when uh, I was at Huntertown, uh, Dave Michael, uh, after we had a membership uh, class for uh, youth group kids, uh, would, when we received them as members, uh, would often pray uh, uh, something like this. Lord, hey, Thank you for the commitment that they've made to you today. But uh, God, if they ever wander from that commitment, if they ever find themselves in a distant country, uh, may the grace that first drew them to you draw them back. Uh, and for us to pray that for our prodigals, I think, is a good thing. And then we can pray uh, selected uh, portions of Scripture over uh, over our uh, kids' lives. Um, one of the 
prayers that I pray and I make a, a declaration o- over my family is that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and that includes uh, all of my house, even, even those who are uh, farther from the Lord than, uh, than I'd like for them to be. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I also pray uh, Luke 2.52 for uh, uh, my kids and my grandkids. Uh, Lord, uh, may they grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with you and with others. Another great prayer to pray uh, would be the uh, prayer that, um, or the scripture that mom used. Uh, Lord, help me to train up this child in the way that, that they should go. And when they are old, they won't depart from it. Lord, help them not to depart from uh, loving you with all they've got and loving others as uh, you have loved them. Uh, another scripture, um, and this was shared by a, a, a saint of the Lord over in uh, Goshen, uh, is uh, from Isaiah 54 where it says, uh, and uh, uh, their children will be taught by the Lord and great uh, will be their peace. And, and so, I've been praying for my children and my grandchildren to be taught of the Lord and for them to experience great peace. And then, uh, finally, what Mom said at the end of uh, the interview, um, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Winston Churchill uh, was asked to give a speech, and and according to... um, the antidotes uh, about the speech. He, he goes to give this speech, and, and it's like a commencement or uh, something like that. And uh, Winston Churchill, who was known as a great speaker, um, stands before uh, the students and says, uh, Never, 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 never give up. And then he sits back down, <laughs> you, you know. But but the idea that um, you, you know we need to persevere. Uh, actually, one of the great promises from Scripture is uh, Galatians chapter six, verse nine, where it says, "Be not weary in well doing, for in due season you'll reap a harvest if you don't give up." I think that that applies for us, believing for and praying for and relating to. Uh, in healthy, life-giving ways are are prodigal. So um, would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord God, we uh, thank you that you are a God who loves those who are far from you. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you're a God who loves rascals, who loves those whose lives are messed up. Lord, uh, that you delight in bringing those uh, folks to yourself and, and, and cleaning them up, making them more like Jesus. That, that gives your heart joy. And Lord, we all know of prodigals. And God, I pray that you would be at work in each of their lives. Brothers and sisters, would you just pray Uh, for your prodigal uh, right now, a a prodigal that you know. Uh, Would you pray that uh, God would draw them close? Would you pray that God would protect them from things they don't even want to be protected from? Would you pray that the spiritual blinders would just be taken off of them? Would you pray, would you pray that you would live your life in front of them in such a way that they would be thirsty for the living water, thirsty for Jesus. Lord, these things we ask in your name and for your sake. And all God's people said, amen. Would you stand, please, as we sing the closing song. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail 
not as thou hast been now forever will be great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed, thy end hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings of mine with ten thousand beside great Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a great Mother's Day. A day where we get to celebrate and help us have a good time this afternoon, but also those who are struggling with people who are far from God in their lives. Everyone has them. Everyone knows who. Please help us to remain vigilant in our prayers, to remain vigilant in talking and showing the gospel however we can. I pray that you may be with us through everything we do this week. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Sunday.